I hope you will be interested in uh, what I have, what I will talk this afternoon. Can you all hear me? Oh, maybe I have to change something. Yeah, this is better, I think. Um, I would like to uh, discuss something about um, what I think emerging uh, technologies are doing to information and uh, also uh, what we can do about that, what we are willing to do about that. Uh, I called it information in the era of hyperconnectivity because I think connectivity is a very important factor that is changing a lot in the world of information, not exactly to data, but to information. Um, first, on a high level, I would discuss some uh, regulations in the field of data protection, uh, because that's one way of approaching information and trying to protect information. It's the legal way to do that. Um, we have uh, the safe harbor uh, uh, regulation, which uh, now uh, will be replaced by the data shield uh, regulation. And, um, uh, but the data shield regulation uh, does not uh, limit the collection and uh, the retention of data. And also there are questions uh, to the enforcement of uh, the regulations. Uh, so uh, it could be said that it's not a strong regulation to, uh, to protect uh, data. Uh, in uh, Europe, we have the General Data Protection Regulation. Um, and uh, as part of that, there's a data breach notification, an obligation to notify. And uh, so also security and pseudonymization and uh, encryption are an obligation as part of that uh, regulation. So that's, I think, a great thing to protect data. But the question is, uh, how uh, will organizations comply with this regulation and how can we enforce it, the, the compliance? Because um, uh, it has also to do uh, with uh, governance, with IT governance. And if you do not know uh, that you're doing things wrong, the wrong way, then you cannot notify anybody about you are doing it the wrong way. So it's, um, uh, it is something, but it's not, uh, not complete, it's not perfect. Um, in the Netherlands, we also have a, a proposal for a new law for the uh, intelligence services. And uh, in a nutshell, uh, the regulation says, well, okay, we will continue to uh, 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 tap the internet and uh, we will do so even more when you look at the budget we will increase uh, the tapping of the internet from 15 million in 2017 to 35 million euros in uh, 2019 and um, well that's only about money which is of course not an important it's an indicator but also apart from that uh, the technologies will improve. So, uh, in fact, uh, these numbers tell me that uh, the interception will uh, raise by like a factor of three or four at least. Um, um, so, of course, this has to uh, be done in uh, in accordance with uh, other regulations, but. Uh, uh, also, it, um, it is clear that uh, uh, intelligence services uh, do not always comply with the regulations, and uh, uh, in some cases that uh, may go unnoticed. Uh, um, well, in uh, the traffic, air traffic uh, between the US and uh, Europe, we have the passenger name record regulation. Um, still, this regulation uh, has fake uh, definitions about uh, what data 
may be collected and or must be collected and not, and what the duration of the storage is. Um, and uh, as for the effectiveness uh, of the collection of the data, there is no obligation to share the data with the member states and that of course, uh, uh, well, it may harm uh, the effectiveness. Also, uh, you may have names on the list, but then when there are pseudonyms or false identities on board, or uh, people uh, who want, well uh, are somehow uh, 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 manipulating their identity, they will go unnoticed this way. Um, well, this is all about regulations, and hopefully <laughs> uh, they are kept. Uh, but also, uh, in, the f uh, in the case with uh, the iPhone uh, uh, in the US, uh, we have seen that uh, the US has uh, asked uh, uh, for uh, the uh, encryption to be broken. Um, but uh, they didn't manage uh, soon enough, so they just asked an uh, Israeli uh, company to, uh, to break uh, uh, the encryption, and they succeeded. So uh, the regulations uh, are maybe effective, but only to a certain extent. And if you if you have enough power and enough money, or a combination of the two, then you can always break one way or another at the regulations. The regulations are all about uh, data protection, so... Um, uh, uh, data protection, uh, from a point of view of the, the, the current and past state of Technology. The Netherlands Scientific Council for Government Policy has noticed that, and they said that the current legal framework works for the, uh, in particular for the intelligence services, focus on the collection and sharing of data, uh, but they should be supplemented by new standards for the analysis and use of data in big data processes. And of course, that's. Uh, a uh, very serious problem because in access controls we always talked about uh, discrete sets of information, whereas in uh, big data analysis there are new sets of information created. And that's a special field, a special subset of information that is to be protected. Um, well, then I would like to uh, talk briefly about uh, society. Uh, this is a conference on technology, but I think uh, technology has a great impact uh, on uh, society these days. And uh, I would like to say something about surveillance, surveillance uh, versus uh, secretive society. Uh, well, in effect, um, in fact, I think surveillance societies will often be very secretive societies. Well, I don't have to uh, explain to you what surveillance is. Uh, apart from that, uh, I think we must be aware of uh, the fact that we are exposing ourselves on social media, etc. So uh, <laughs> we are a willing prey, so to say. <laughs> um, uh, a secretive, secretive society has to do with the fact that uh, uh, in the cyber uh, world it's easy to hide uh, and there are many places where you can uh, act unseen and uh, or even you yourself will be invisible. Now, why is that so important uh, to say? It's not it has not only to do with uh, criminality, it has also to do with the type of society we live in. We have seen in the 20th century uh, that uh, archives uh, have been, well, maybe the core uh, instrument of uh, uh, totalitarian regimes, uh, both for Nazi and Stasi regimes. 
and this was only paper and there was no big data analysis on this uh, on these uh, archives only small data analysis so to say very very slow very very limited in scope now the question is uh, what do all the new technologies we have with big data analysis with exposure through social media with exposure through the internet of things the emerging internet of things what will they do to our society i do have the question i don't have the answer but i really want to um, to be aware of it and uh, to uh, have it as part of the discussion in, uh, in the world of uh, it security and data protection um, now I found this word, information, um, and uh, information, the word information in my opinion has to do with the fact in, uh, that in data analy analytics we generate new information, and uh, new information uh, can also mean that uh, information uh, that beforehand was not personalized, you can when you start with not personalized information, then you can end up with personalized information. So data analytics are very intrusive. And also the volume of the information is uh, increasing exponentiality, exponential. Uh, apart from the fact that the information is growing exponential, uh, there's hyper-connectivity, so uh, all the data will be available almost everywhere. And uh, they will be kept for long periods of time. So um, uh, there will be no unknown fact or place left, maybe, in the end. Um, why do we collect all this data, why do we analyze this? Um, well, uh, we are acting uh, on a number of uh, dilemmas and a uh, few of the important dilemmas have to do with a need to know versus need to share. We want to share in order to make the world more secure. We want to, uh, uh, to pay the price of uh, privacy uh, because we want to be safe. And uh, in the case of the attacks of 911, uh, uh, it was concluded that the uh, intelligence services in the United States had to share information. And then from that information, somehow uh, <laughs> it caused uh, WikiLeaks and uh, similar things to happen. Um, but uh, even more important, I think, is that uh, what I already said is that I started with the fact that in data analytics we end up with more information that the output is greater than the input. The volume of information is greater than the input. And then uh, William Benny, who is an ex-NSA uh, uh, um, analyst, I think, uh, he is a whistleblower, as a matter of fact, and um, uh, he says we are not only that we are collecting so much data, but also on top of that uh, we analyze this data and the volume of information we are generating causes us to be uh, 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 ends up in no information at all. So. Uh, an overdose of information somehow turns into no information of at all. And um, uh, he says that uh, that causes a great danger because we act as if we know everything, whereas in fact maybe we do not so much or even we do know nothing or we know the wrong thing. So the question is, uh, we want to know, we want to have information, but we also have to know where to stop knowing, <laughs> because otherwise it will be ineffective or, or counterproductive. So 
I found this picture of uh, psilocybine. Uh, and um, then uh, you may ask what is psilocybine. I didn't know that either. But it's uh, what is called uh, pados in the Netherlands, it's a type of drug. And on the left hand, you see uh, the state of uh, uh, nerves uh, uh, when people do not uh, use uh, pados. And on the right, you see the state of the, bra the, the nerves and the brain when they do use pados. So you see that uh, the connectivity is. Uh, much, much more higher, and yeah, it's a metaphor, so to say. I use it as a metaphor um, to think about what can happen to society when we have too much connections. It may be feel, feel uh, great to some persons to uh, use pados, but uh, in uh, fact, I think uh, it we will end up not with information, but with information. Well, also, I found out this word and then I looked it up uh, and then uh, some other people have invented this word as well. So, but typically, uh, Oscar Wilde, for example, says uh, <laughs> you've got it wrong and that's what it's all about, information. Now, what challenges are we uh, facing uh, with regards to uh, the things I have discussed? Um, of course, one important point is uh, democratic uh, governance, not only uh, governance in terms of technology, but also democratic governance. So uh, people who are involved in politics, etc., they should understand what's going on and should be able to anticipate on it. Also, we need some sort of balance of powers uh, in terms of access to information and also the powers of comprehension. The last thing, by the last thing I mean that uh, in this field uh, it's uh, often difficult to make uh, accurate policies because the policy makers cannot dive deep into the bits and bytes in order to find out what's going on. So, uh, but in fact somebody should <laughs> and then make a valid policy, valid in terms of uh, democracy. Um, then we have some uh, technological uh, challenges. Um, we should strive for a balanced uh, application of technologies. Uh, the cyber intelligence and cyber security intelligence should keep uh, with the cyber arms race, what I call cyber arms race. Um, and uh, data protection should keep pace with cyber intelligence so uh, and i think um, on a very high level uh, when talking about data protection and information security etc uh, we should strive for a stronger mimicry uh, with uh, the world of attackers so we need uh, emerging technologies which are threatening us and we should use the same technologies in order to protect ourselves. And also, last but not least, we need some robust cyber, uh, cyber infrastructure. And I think <laughs> there are some things in particular with regard to the World Wide Web that can be improved. And I will not go into details about that, but... <coughs> now, uh, when we look at uh, the concept of information and uh, uh, the intrusion of privacy and all these things that are going on, um, when we look at the regulation, the Dutch regulation for uh, uh, the intelligence services, one thing that has, be sa has been said is that uh, they really need uh, great powers to uh, collect uh, all sorts of data, uh, not only uh, focusing on particular individuals or groups or something, but more generic powers. Uh, the reason for that has been that uh, the services say, okay, 
uh, we most of the time we do not know who is acting on the internet because uh, uh, people who are doing something uh, wrong in our perception. Uh, they will be uh, using pseudonyms or they will be anonymous or something like that. So for that reason, we could somehow try and look at the identity infrastructure on the web. And uh, my suggestion is that blockchain technology might be of help there. And if somebody is uh, <laughs> interested in uh, discussing that uh, with me in uh, greater detail, I, I would like that very much. And uh, when we have a stronger infrastructure, then uh, intelligent services would be able to focus more on uh, individuals who are a risk or groups who are risks. And then in terms of retention, they should also uh, be able to decide which information they have to keep and which information that can be thrown away after one day or one week or something. And also, uh, when you have an identity infrastructure, a stronger in identity infrastructure, then you could uh, uh, filter, well, I, in fact, implicitly I said that already, you can somehow filter information and then throw everything away that is not relevant anymore very fast after analysis. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if there are any questions or remark, you may uh, say so. Can yeah. you say anything more about how you would use blockchain for identity? I mean, it's easy for those who don't want to be in it to yeah. stay out of it. Mm -hmm. I can say something. I'm not an expert in blockchain technology. That's what I start with. But I understand uh, cryptography in terms of uh, what can I use it for. Now, I've been thinking about, uh, on a high level, I do understand what blockchain is. And here's, <laughs> of course, some sort of uh, uh, example. Uh, in every block, information is stored. And then within a block, the information is encrypted, but not only in itself, but in connection with a preceding block or preceding blocks. So that means that uh, if I take a block out of it, uh, I have to uh, approach the information set in connection with each other. If I want to uh, 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 decrypt and change the information in a legitimate way. So what we see in uh, identity management, we have the problem of uh, source documents or source information, which means that when I uh, go to uh, a forger, I can say, OK, give me a birth certificate, give me a passport, give me something to prove that I am not who I am, but somebody else. Then, if it's a good forger, then he will do that, and they will pay, and then here I am, just a new person. The model here, uh, the, 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 the advantage of the blockchain model is that no set of information stands on its own. So you always need some sort of source or root or something to go back to in order to uh, proceed. So everything is connected. So you cannot uh, just say, I take one uh, element out of the chain and then uh, falsify it, because you have to go back to the chain somehow. <laughs> That's why this uh, algorithm can strengthen, in principle, uh, identity management in general, not only for internet or for IT applications, but also for national governments to uh, to define or register the identities of uh, their citizens. Okay. Okay. 
Thank you.